TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So you could just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. So Let us continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Little warning screen just in case. Uh, Twitch.com is where you can catch any of the lives. The username's at the bottom of the screen. And we also got merch and we got Patreon. You can thank Patreon for this because they want this. So I'm going to watch it. Hopefully it can go to YouTube. If not, it's a Twitch exclusive. Only Twitch get this. Let's get into it. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. I forgot to tell y'all what it even was. It's a uh, Banged Up Abroad, Season 1, Episode 1. Beautiful, the, the water's blue. Not understanding why they were going to pay for us to go to Peru. We just have to bring something, a, a little bit extra. What? And they said a little bit of cocaine. At that point, follow him. Let's get to it. I'm pretty much born and raised right on a beach, California. I was a straight A student. I hated missing school. I was active in sports. I was good. Is there a UK version or is this the only version? It gotta be this. Jennifer and I met through a mutual friend who used to run a modeling agency. And so she introduced us and immediately we clicked, we hit it off. It's like we had a connection. From then on out, we started hanging out as often as we could. As promoters, I mean, we basically got paid to go mingle, pass out flyers, let people know what was going on at our parties. It was kind of glamorous because Jennifer and I were known as the girls. Yes, it was exciting. It was, you know, we were partying with famous people. Out partying until 7, 8 in the morning, getting home at 10 in the morning. I know what that means. <laughs> Class A's, you were ingesting them. 8 in the morning means you was doing <laughs> living kind of a really fast Hollywood lifestyle. Didn't really know where my life was going. It wasn't something that we could do forever. I was just getting ready to go to work and I get this phone call. Hello? And it was Jose. Who? She had a friend, Jose, who was actually a friend of the families for many years. And I hadn't heard from Jose in a year and a half, two years. Oh my God, how are you doing? He was a surfer, he was Peruvian, you know, just kind of laid back. I was excited to hear from him. When he called, I was excited, you know? We had, we, I had nothing but fond memories. I have an ex that's Peruvian. It's <laughs> funny. I told him to swing by the pizzeria that I was working in, and he did. Oh my God! Are you? The and everything. Oh, it's so good to see you. Are you, you looking great? And I'd ask where he had been and what he'd been up to. Just in school, busy, you know, and surfing, surfing a lot. He was very vague. He he had just said, "Yeah, well, I've been around, you know." You wanna you wanna catch a movie later or yeah, something? Yeah, no, that sounds good. Definitely yeah. a proper catch up. Yeah. yeah excellent. So, yeah, call myself. Call myself. So good to see you. It's <laughs> weird how he just kind of disappeared and then so abruptly just was back in in my life. It's crazy. So you told us all the red flags, but you missed them. Disappeared abruptly, then suddenly was back in my life. That was that red flag, ma'am. Oh, it seemed like Jose had a lot of money, yeah. He had jet skis. You know, he had a nice car. He had a house in Mexico. Red flags, red flags. Not to mention the house that he was living in was pretty fantastic. It was very nice, very, very nice. I kind of questioned it, you know, like, hmm, what's going on here? And I asked him, and he said his father sent him money from Miami. Because he didn't have a job. Jose went to school full-time and surfed full-time. And I believed it, of course. And he was like, no, I have an extra... gullible California girl, that's... Hey. Extreme, why don't your girls move in? And we were like, oh. The room that we were given, um, like, literally opened up onto the ocean. 
just gorgeous. And you woke up every morning and you can hear the seals and the waves and we were living we we're living a pretty nice lifestyle. Probably too good to be true. How they think about it. Right. So you could in retrospect you feel it, but like when it's happening, too good to be true is a red flag for me. And I see it in real time when something is too good to be true. I mean, nah, I'm good. Yeah, time is always a good time for me. <laughs> Give me a go. Yeah, now. What's my brother? Hey, ¿qué onda? La vuelta. A couple of childhood friends come to visit Angelo and Lucio. This is Krista. Hey. Jennifer. Hey. Hey. Angelo, Lucio. Nice to meet you. How are you? Hey, good to meet you. Angelo, Lucio. Hey. How's it Hi, going? Hi, nice to meet you. They seem nice. You know, they were Peruvian. Spoke broken English, but they did, you know, speak a little bit of English, so we were able to, you know, speak with them. Is that bad? <laughs> no, I'm not that. Getting to know you guys. They always hung around the house. Anytime we left, they were there. Anytime we came home, they were there. Hey, can we talk to you for a second? Yeah, what's up? So one day, Angelo and, and Lucho called us into the living room. Here's the oh, conversation. So you guys had fun last night. <laughs> yeah. 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 They um, asked us how our night was and, and what time we'd gotten in, and we had fun, and we're like, okay, what is this small talk, you know? So we were just talking about it, and, and we want to give you guys the opportunity to go to Peru, everything included for a few weeks. All expense paid trip to Peru. You know, we wanted to travel. It was Peru, we'd never been there. And we were like, wow. You go over there. Is it not clicking? With our friends, they'll take you, you want to go shopping, you'll go shopping, you'll do whatever you want. They made it sound like it was Rio de Janeiro. It's a, it's a couple things that would have been running through my head, and it should have been running through y'all head. Hey, listen, am I going to be sold into something that I don't want to do? Trafficking. Or am I about tra now trafficking human for intercourse? Am I about to get taken? That's one. And the second thing is 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 yeah, drug trafficking. Something's not right. Canaro or something, we'd be going on the vacation of our lives. The beaches are beautiful. The, the water is blue. Um, a little hesitant, because not understanding As why they were going to pay for us to go to Peru. Uh, no, well, you just, you just have to bring something a, a little bit extra. We'll get your plane tickets, we'll get your passports. You just have to bring something a little extra back in your bag. There it comes. They're like, okay, what? <laughs> and they said, a little bit of cocaine. It's just a little small amount. It's no big deal. It's like bringing a pair of tennis shoes in our bag. It was, it was nothing. And they told us that the bags were, you know, everything was professional. Everything was... So why ain't y'all doing it? That's the first, you know what I'm saying? Y'all do it then if it's going, that's all good. Professional. They spent thousands of dollars on, on making these bags. We would not even be able to see it, see the drugs. You know, they have a, a way of doing it to where it's put in the seam of your bag. And, you know, basically, we wouldn't even be able to tell that it was there. I asked what, you know, what if we would get caught? What if we do get caught? And I remember them specifically saying, this is something that did stick in my mind. They said, there will, there's no way that you will get caught. There's no way. Trust me. Paid $5,000 each. Cash? Even at you that, $5,000 ain't it. enough. We'll meet Thursday. Okay. I need $25,000, allegedly. The most attractive thing about the offer was the traveling, you know? I've always wanted to travel my whole life. It was Peru, we'd never been there. And also, obviously the money. $5,000 was a lot at the time, compared to what we had. And we planned, we were going to take $5,000 and put it in the bank, and the other 5,000 we were gonna go visit our families. I'm from the Midwest, so I mean, pretty far from California, and Krista's mom lived in Michigan at the time. And I also remember we were gonna buy makeup. We had nothing to lose, that's what we thought. 
You have everything to lose. We're ready to go. Freedom. Let's do it. Angela and Lucha said that we would meet in a couple days outside and we met on the pier in Redondo and they just told us the only thing we couldn't do was tell Jose. He can't know. Okay. We said okay. Not really understanding uh, why or not really questioning it. The tickets? Yes. I got them. Okay. Everything's set. Everything's ready to go. It was really happening. You know, this was it. It was really happening. We were going to do it. I was 19. You know, I felt like I was invincible. I mean, for me, it was just the experience of kind of leaving the lifestyle that I wasn't happy living. Even though it was a glamorous lifestyle, this is kind of like an opportunity to get out and start over, I guess. I mean, I, I think that there was a point when I did get... You're 19. What do you mean, get out and start over? What are you even talking about right now? a little apprehensive and worried about it. I should have followed my gut instinct at the time, I don't know. The guys just told us, pack nice clothes and pack like you're going on vacation. Money can make you do some uncharacteristic things. We've never really been on a vacation of our lifetime, so we're going to paradise for nine days. let that whole denial kick in and kind of look at the other part of it. The vacation and the money. We had like a few hours to kill. Then we met this gentleman who I believe was American and he goes, why are you guys going to Peru? And we're like, oh, we're just going on vacation. He goes, you're not going to smuggle drugs, are you? What? Chris and I were kind of like, ha, 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 you know, kind of laughed it off or whatever. Because we honestly thought we were like the first ones doing this. And I think that was the first time we thought maybe, okay, so people are actually aware that people do this, if that makes any sense, you know? Yeah, so you're not under the radar as you think. And we are descending to land in Peru. And we're just like, ooh. It was gray. It, was, it looked cold outside. It was ugly. It was dirty. It was Man. not the palm trees and beautiful place that I envisioned at all. And we got off the plane. Stop. And I remember just kind of looking to see, you know, who it was that was going to be waiting for us and picking us up. Renzo and Fabricio, they didn't have a sign or anything, they just kind of like... Hi girls, hey. Like they knew, the only two white girls there, they knew we were probably those girls. They were very friendly, you know, they helped us with our luggage. Hey, let's go. The thing is like, like, okay, yes, I get tours, but like y'all kind of stick out like a sore thumb too. California, small Caucasian women, in Peru, they're gonna like point y'all out. Like you're not, it's not gonna be as smooth as you think. You gotta blend. You don't blend. <laughs> How was the flight? It was good. It's long. Yeah. I'm so tired. Yeah. They walked us to their car and basically told us that they would be taking us to, you know, the hotel where we would be staying. As soon as we get in the car, we take off like skidding. We were like immediately like holding hands. Jennifer and I just looking at each other, going, "Oh my god." like smoking spliffs in the car. We look down and there's um, like a gun. I don't know if that was a tactic to scare us. You know, I was still kind of hoping though that maybe they just carry guns around and it wasn't going to turn out all bad like it did. Give me the passports. Give you the that, passports. That was odd too. No. Passports? I questioned the fact that why they felt like they needed to take our passports. Because I say so. They 
now got our passports. It's getting ugly. They've shown us that they have guns. What's next? The hotel was far, far away. There was nothing around. Oh, is this it? I know. What are we going to do? It was just a dirt road and farm land. The place was empty. It was completely empty. We were not on vacation. The cocaine we were ranch. Basically being held prisoners already in a hotel room that they took us to, you know, 40 miles out of the city with no contact with anyone except for them. Okay, we need your bags. Now? Yes, now. They took the bags because those were obviously the bags that they were going to do the job with. Quickly. All right, let me help you. Wouldn't the point be to treat them nicely so they would want to do it multiple times? Just the uh, thinking out loud, playing devil's advocate. I don't condone any of this, YouTube, but you know, after this experience, they would never want to do it again. We right? saw the bags. We never saw anything um, up until the the morning we left. Yeah. Where are you going? They didn't leave us any way of contacting them. You know, it was basically, we'll get back to you when we're ready. Have fun. We'll pick up tomorrow. Don't leave the hotel. Yeah. They left us in a hotel for like two days. Didn't even hear from them. Didn't even see them. It's like Did that. Did eat? Okay. <laughs> we walked. We braided each other's hair. We watched Spanish TV. I remember they had a, a nice pool. Drained. Oh my God. We were bored out of our minds. I mean, we didn't even know how to call a taxi. We couldn't speak Spanish. We didn't know anything. It can't get worse than this. Tomorrow's gonna be better. <coughs> Renzo and Fabrizio finally called us after a couple days and they said, oh, we're gonna come pick you up. We're gonna take you to the beach. And we're like, okay, great. Awesome. Tomorrow we'll, it'll be blue skies and we'll go to the beaches and it will be, you know, laying on the sand and sitting in our bikinis. This is the beach. It was a beach. There was sand and and the ocean, but well, they have the it worst wasn't experience. summertime. I'm almost positive, like Peru is nice in some areas. In there, and I think basically during the winter, everything kind of closes down. This isn't even beach. Yeah. Ay! It's just a bunch of rocks. I mean, we're ready to leave the beach. Like the rocks. <laughs> the best rock in Latin America. There's dead crabs everywhere. Just driving with, with friends and Fabricio to the beaches, they never mentioned the drugs. We never talked about it. We didn't talk about the bags. We didn't talk about anything. Ever. I believe it was the third day in. They said, oh, we've set up a tour of the city. Hey, this is cool. Well, the city was definitely um, right? prettier. <laughs> you know, there were old buildings and the architect was interesting. Kind of took our minds off of our negative moods of being stuck in the hotel room and not doing anything. The central bank of the self you're going to see here. There was an interpreter and she was, her name was Tessie. And she spoke perfect English and it was wonderful to be able to actually speak to someone. We're going to go on a disco today. You going to join us? Jennifer, like, yes, because Jennifer's a huge dancer. Took my card. You can call me here. Oh, okay. Great. Okay, that's, you can call so me. We can meet in some place and go. Oh, that's that's amazing. Awesome. We're thinking, thank wow, God, finally someone away. is really gonna, you know, tell us where to go and what to do. <laughs> we'll give you a call tonight. <laughs> okay. See you. See you. See you. After the tour, we get back and the guys pick us up and and we're really excited. Beautiful. But the best thing we met, like, such a sweet girl. She was so nice. She gave us her card and said we can go out with her tonight. That's I not you. Right. No, that's a They automatically negative. got mad. You can't anywhere, okay? You stay in the hotel. Please don't freak out. No pueden salir. Okay. Vamos, vamos. Get it. Muevete. 
Go, go, go. We never got to see Tessie. We never got to go dancing. Hurry. We had no passports. We had no money. And we knew the guys had guns, and we didn't know them well enough to know that they would or would not hurt us. And it was just kind of a dead end. No turning back. We have to go through it. We have two more days. I wonder what they th was thinking in their mind, like the people that's holding them. Like, what? what? Y'all might as well just let them go have fun. Wouldn't it be less stressful for all parties involved? The day before we were leaving, they came by to pick up all of our clothes. The guys, um, they were going to take our clothes and all of our stuff and pack it into the original suitcases, the cocaine in it. It felt good because we weren't going to have to see the bags. We weren't going to have to wonder where the cocaine was. I mean, that, that helped in the process of our denial, absolutely. You said we're ready. Yeah. They said, okay, well, we're not going to see you tomorrow. There's going to be a guy, a friend of ours, that, that's going to get you a cab and drop the bags off to you tomorrow morning. They gave us some, uh, some sleeping pills, just in case. something to like calm us down in case we were nervous. I think I was definitely more than willing to take it to help me sleep, yes. The guys um, said, in case we were questioned by customs, just relax and remember you went to Machu Picchu in Cusco. Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu and Cusco. 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 Yeah, Cusco. 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 Okay, it's very important. Like I said, I think at that point I was ready to go home. I was just, take the bag, let's get this over with. Tomorrow we're getting on the plane. We woke up the next morning to um, a knock on the door. Did you say anything? The minute I saw the bags, my heart started pounding. Were they sketchy or did they look like, you know what I'm saying? That's when the real fear kicked in. I wanted to know what was in there, how much was in there. I wanted to make sure that they, there was no evidence of it being there. And there was not, not that I could see to my eye. Well, you're not a professional. Let's just, Christian agenda, nine days of nothing. On September, they left to them, okay. They're gonna get caught in Peru, obviously, right? Because it's banged up abroad, okay. And the whole way to the airport was probably the longest ride ever. Very long. I think that we were both very scared at that point. If we would have tried to back out, I think we feared what could happen to us. No one knew how that we were there. How I mean, would you they get could have home? killed us and no one would know. We didn't know there was an American embassy in Peru that we could have called. We didn't speak the language. Our parents didn't know where we were. Um, we didn't even know how to use a phone, like if we had to call home, you know? Not to mention we- This the part, man, being young and dumb. Y'all idiots. <laughs> This is the dumbest thing that I ever heard of somebody doing. People actually be doing this dumb shit. Didn't have money to call. You know, we were screwed. I remember just, you know, kind of going through my head. We were, you know, there just to visit for students and, you know, we went to see Cusco. We get to the airport and um, starting to get nervous. I don't feel like you can duck them dogs now. That's a golden retriever. He played basketball, and like Mike, he sniffed good. He's a good boy. He's lassy, all type of stuff. You can't duck that golden retriever when it comes to smell it. Don't get nervous. Don't let anything show on your face. Just do it. Get on that plane. Just do it. All right. Sound good. We were dropped off, and the guy asked if we wanted help with our luggage. 
Um, we're like, no, 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 we got it. Thank you. No, that's okay. Honestly, we're fine. You're told very clearly to never let go of our luggage. We walk inside. And there are drug dogs walking back and forth and police officers and machine guns. Yeah, they set y'all up for failure. Is it clear? They had no do care. They did not care about y'all if y'all got caught or anything. But yeah, I'd definitely be like, nah, I don't know. Do you have some water? Um, sure. And there was a customs agent at the ticket counter already. Dang. He looked like he don't play no games. I don't necessarily think that I was extremely alarmed to see him, but I was also just kind of like, okay, this is the first step. We have to get through this. The customs agent asked us for our passport. Okay. I gotta know, like, these custom agents genuinely know how much bags are supposed to weigh. You know what I'm saying? Their bags are definitely probably heavy. Heart's starting to pound a little more. Uh, Just remember thinking, okay, this is it. Uh, how long in Peru? Uh, nine, days. <coughs> nine days. Nine days. Donde? Oh, uh, Machu Picchu. No? Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Yeah. Machu Picchu. Okay. Which was, I mean, really so unlikely at that time. The weather was bad. You know what I mean? It was just not the time for vacation in Peru. I thought we did everything right. We did everything we were supposed to. This is why the dude should have let them go explore and do what they wanted to do because it would have been more... The, the, Whatever they're talking about would have been more believable. They asked us to walk where we originally put our bags. I, I don't. Sorry, what? Uh, uh, que me diga acompañar, le vamos a hacer un requisito a la maleta. Que me acompañe, Policio. With him? You come uh, with sir? Sí, por acá. Okay, por acá. What? Words cannot express what I felt at that moment. Hey. Please don't walk on the scales. I was floored. Boy, my heart would have been in my in my ankle. <laughs> oh my god, no. I just got asked by a proven custom agent to follow him to a back room when I have cocaine in my bag. Yeah. Y'all stuck out like a sore thumb. I would have ran. Scared I to would've. death. But then you're like a fugitive in Peru. Like, what am I going to do out here? No, yeah, I'm not going to. Thank you. Get us back to where the we The custom agent takes us to this room. Mm -hmm. My heart was racing. I just remember there was drug dogs there. Do you have drugs into your baggage? No. <laughs> we are police officers of drugs. Okay? Are they going to find it right away? And there's a guy hunched over our bag with this pin type of thing and like a metal uh, hook. Game over. Game over. And he had poked our bag. That white substance come out. Pulled it out and coke came out of it. It's a cocaine. I think I went into shock, honestly. I would have, huh? What, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> it can't be. Jennifer and I just kind of looked at each other and we're just like, 
you know, kind of put our hands in the air and shrugged our shoulders. I, what is he talking about? This isn't ours. Those are our bags. But no, this isn't ours, and we don't know how it got there. And you know, the only thing we could say was that it wasn't our bag. But you know, I mean, we brought him in the airport, so. You know, this happened to me at the airport. I was flying to Florida, I believe, or flying back from Florida. And somebody came up to me and was like, oh, where are you flying to? And I, was, and I told him, I was, and I was looking at him like, bro, what do you want? You know what I'm saying? He was like, uh, I'm a customs agent or I'm a, I'm a secret somebody. Can I, I need to check your bag. I was, bro, I'm African-American. Do you think I'm out here customs, like trafficking drugs? Like, I am the biggest red flag that no I'm not doing that I am not incognito that would be the, the stupidest thing I could ever do it took him a good 45 minutes to an hour to tear the bags apart they were taking our clothes out they opened the bags, the bottom of the bags. It was like in a big, flat, almost plastic-looking type cover, and they pulled that out. Okay. The whole entire bottom of, of the bag was just full of blocks of cocaine. Man, they told y'all a little bit, boy. It looked like 12 keys a piece in that month. And at that point, I still didn't know what, how much a kilo was, but I knew that it was more than what I was told I was going to be bringing back home. It was there, and it was wrapped in, like, black tape, and it was blocks, and there was a lot. Okay. Look at that. That amount of coke would have been worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. 8.8 kilos. It was pure cocaine. How, how, wait, is that again? 8.8. So nine kilo kilos. Nine keys, and they let y'all do it for 5,000. What's up, dollars? 8.8 kilos. It was pure cocaine. Not cut. Pure cocaine. I mean, we were completely ignorant about it, and it was just. It was overwhelming. It was absolutely overwhelming. We get to this little room. I have no doubt in my mind. Peru, I'm going home. Ross, we are, yeah. We're still there on vacation. Okay, didn't work, but we're still going home. It's not ours. Okay. And then you open the curtain. And we saw our plane. And then it, he made us watch it take off. Okay. That's negative. It's not on there. No home. And the plane took off, and we weren't on it. You gotta make better decisions. Now you gotta, y'all felons too. when we broke down and realized we're not going home. The fact that y'all didn't think, y'all thought y'all was still going home after they found nine keys of pure Peruvian cocaine in y'all bags is insane of y'all. Like, y'all don't watch movies at all? Y'all should have known the jig was up, buddy. You're going to jail. <laughs> We left the airport, we were handcuffed, and we're driving, not talking, not really realizing what's going on. I could not look at Krista. We were taken out, and we entered this building. All the people are staring at you. We didn't know what was they going know. on. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know. I remember seeing a couple of cells off to the right. 
and we're saying no, no. And at this point, we're crying. We, we, we don't believe they're going to really put us here. And we were put into a room. At least you're all together still. We had a plastic bag with what little belongings we had, and we just held each other and cried the whole night. I'm, I'm the crybaby of the, of the two of us, but... It's all right. It's a valid... Yeah, she cried. A valid reason right now. There was times where Jennifer would not stop crying, and I would just look at her and be like, you need to stop crying. And she would look at me and just put her hands in the air and just tell me, well, what do you want me to do? And then I would start crying. So it was like, for a while, it was just we're trying to keep each other strong, you know? When she was weak, I was strong and vice versa, but it got to a point where... There was no strength left, you know? There was nothing but tears. There was no words, no comforting, nothing. Nothing was going to make it okay. Contemplated ending our lives, but we couldn't figure out how to do it at the same time. <laughs> I think Krista and I even discussed a couple different ways that we could do it. Man, it was that peak? You ain't even in prison yet. You in a holding cell, but I get it. The mental strain on two 19-year-old California girls who have probably never been in trouble. It's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a tough, up, I mean, it's a tough battle right now. Bro. Yeah. We were there for 15 days. We weren't given food. We weren't given water. We weren't allowed to shower. We didn't know what day it was. We didn't know what time it was. so excited because we're like finally we may know what's going to happen to us the American embassy it wasn't like that at all I don't really remember her being very concerned I think it was just straight to the point visit that she had to do whatever you need to say we're going to I said here it's a piece of paper we're going to fax these to your parents I know they I looked told at them everything. in disbelief like really you want us to write down on a piece of paper that you're going to fax to our parents that we're in prison in Peru who, who could do that on a piece of paper, you know? They thought we were in San Francisco. My stepmom was calling morgues because she thought I was dead because she hadn't heard from me. Um, my dad was a police officer for 20 years, so I was told when he found out, he sat down on the couch in front of the TV, didn't shower, didn't eat, didn't do anything for three days. He didn't move, didn't sleep. It was a smooth disappointment. With the first contact with our so parents. So you knew better. <laughs> you knew you knew way better. You knew better to the untinked degree. Over a cell phone. I just remember crying and just saying, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You know? Um, and just, you know, hearing them say, it's, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. My dad always said that. If any of us ever got arrested or in trouble, that he wouldn't cross the street to help us. That we would be on our own. He was a correctional officer. I remember him saying. And I want to know. A correctional officer and a police officer. That's father's boy. Y'all are a piece of work. What you did, I don't. I don't care. I just want you to promise me that you're gonna make it. And from that point on, I knew I had to just go through with it and deal with it. Kaya was a, a male prison. And yeah, but... that was probably one of the worst memories. The matter of having to squat and urinate in front of six male guards. Wow. There was one specific night where they started to come into our cell in the middle of the night. The previous night, we had ha heard people having intercourse or being raped or something. We had, like, some sort of crackers and I think maybe a, a bottle of pop or something. And I completely woke up in a haze and just threw it at the cell door, and it went all over, and he scurried off and never came back. 
Honestly, I think we probably could have been raped. You got lucky. On uh, on October 17th, 1996, Kristen and Jennifer were transferred to Santa Monica, the Caracalaca prison in Lima. Okay. A woman's I just was prison. looking around, just going, this doesn't look like a prison. Or a world this prison. This was like Little dirty town. and there was clothes hanging out, like the bars of the windows, and it looked like it looked like like a bomb shelter. I don't know how to how else to explain it. It was kind of scary, very scary actually. I remember asking if we would finally be allowed to take a shower, and she kind of looked at me and she's like, "You won't be taking a shower for the rest of your time here." She said, "You'll be using a bucket." I think it's here. And we're walking down this corridor. All of these bunk beds were like next to each other and they had sheets draped over ropes to make their own little rooms or to, to create privacy. I think probably about 30 other women in there at least in one room. We didn't know what to expect. Once again, at least y'all are together. Like y'all didn't get separated. That's. We didn't know if it was violent, way harder if it was, was violent, other. or if it was full of, of violent offenders. If you're going to wake up in the middle of the night and have some knife sticking to your throat, or you know, you, you just we didn't know what to expect. We were so different. We were white. We were blonde, or I was blonde. I don't know what it was, but I just remember everyone waking waking up and everyone just staring at me. I don't think I ever had a real night's sleep there. The whole time I was there. The food they called pila. Hold on, I know y'all was eating decent though. I think a rat tail was found once and it was very unedible. Never mind. And um, half the time soon. in the food there would be you know, cockroaches. Yeah, cockroaches were everywhere. You wake up in the morning and they'll run down your leg when you're taking your pajama bottoms off. It was hot and you had to be outside. There wasn't very much shade available. You couldn't drink the water. I dehydrated, I believe, three or four times. Jennifer and I were so lost. We were so lost, we didn't know where we were going or what we were doing. To do what? What the lawyer do? I mean, obviously. Dr. Fishman did everything for us. She wasn't just our lawyer, she brought us food. She hugged us when we needed hugs. They were scared and hungry. So first, the first thing I, I, I made before talking with their parents or before taking the case was to give them something to eat and some comfort. I'm a mother. <laughs> yeah, she was. Yeah, she was like a grandmother or a mother. Dr. Fishman said, so you girls didn't know, and, and we said no, and she's like, well, it's pretty much what everyone says when they first get here, but it's, it's okay. It was easy to know that they really were not criminals. They were not criminals. Well. They were used by criminals. And she pretty much. No, no they were used, but they knew. <laughs> told us, you know, if we cooperate, it's gonna be better for us. We eventually listened to Dr. Ora Fishman. Dang, just off they testimonies? They blamed everything on Jose. Said that he was the head, said that he's the one that set everything up, he's the one that sent us, he's the one, he's the one, he's the one. Jose. I don't think I will ever know if Jose had something to do with it or not. Because in my heart, I don't think he. <coughs> but in well, we don't. I don't care about what your heart feels anymore. Because your heart should have told you a lot of other things sooner. And if it did, you ain't listen anyway. My mind. So, you know what I'm saying? It's so. it's obvious that he did. You know, um, I just know he really, really cared about Jennifer and I a lot. Allegedly. Ian? Wait, 
Y'all yeah. going fast. It was reduced and they said two, three years. Oh, I mean, they got off light, but still. I literally called it Groundhog Day. I mean, it was the same thing every day. You're completely cut off from the outside world. You never see a car drive by, you never see a sunset, you never see the sunrise, you never know what's going on. You feel like you're forgotten, you know? Being human, you can adjust to the conditions, but you can't adjust to the fact that you can't leave. You can't adjust to the fact that you can't pick up the phone and call somebody when you want to. I know they still got PTSD, boy. Ooh. Or when you need to. It's rough. That's rough. You can adjust the fact that you might get to see your family once every six months, maybe. You can't adjust to that. One afternoon, I called Dr. Fishman. She said, today's the day. And we're like, what? Pack your things. And we, we couldn't believe it. In that prison, the people are released by eight in the night. But they were ready since noon. And I told her, be patient. They are going to open the door. You already wait for over two years and you cannot wait for half an hour. That's probably the hardest part, the last 30, 40 minutes. I would not believe it. I was afraid to believe it. And I don't think I believed it until they called my name. Krista, Jennifer, Libertad! Krista Barnes and Jennifer Davis, Libertad. <laughs> Which meant freedom. Cars, no searches. People. Just walked out. To see the cobblestone streets and not just hear about it, you know, it was. Bro, I would have been on the first plane. I'm talking about. I'd never go out the country again. You couldn't even convince me. Chills thinking about it. It's just. It was amazing. And we both took hot showers, and then. Um, we watched the sunrise together and it was it was beautiful. No, I wouldn't have had time for none of that. I don't want no shower. I don't shower in America. You know what I'm saying? Amazing. One of those things that we'd always dreamed of, you know? So many days, so many nights. Imagine a pH balance. I knew it was off in there because they dehydrated. No, this is scientific. They had dehydrated three, four times each in the first month or two. Like, nah. Right. Right. And we walked out. So easy. No searches. <coughs> Just walked out. We watched the sunrise together, and it was it was beautiful. It was amazing. One of those things that we'd always dreamed of, you know? So many days, so many nights. <laughs> Flying back to the States when we finally got clearance, it was, um, again, it was, it was surreal. It was great. It was exciting. But it, it was also sad because Jennifer and I knew we were parting ways at that point, you know? It was very hard to know that that was going to be it. That yeah, she was going to be going back done? to California and I'd be going back to the Midwest oh, okay. with my family. I wanted to get a job and I wanted to be really good at my job and do really well in school. And I started going to school immediately, I think three weeks after I got home. And I graduated 
couple years ago with a degree in International Development Studies and Cultural Anthropology, and I'm very, very excited about that. All I want to do is take my experience and channel it in a more positive way and, and make a difference in other people's lives. No. <laughs> what did it? Thinking about it, I'm like freaking out because I just can't imagine going through those emotions again, you know, psychologically and emotionally. We would wait for people to walk in that spoke English or that, you know, brought us things that we needed. And now I'm that person. It's, just, it's a weird feeling. When they search you, it's going to be a little, you know, emotional. Or just seeing the police there. This is the street it's on. I'm getting pretty nervous. I wish Jennifer was here. <laughs> Jennifer got the, listen. Jennifer got the right idea. Never again. You didn't even catch me back here. I'm coming to the prison because I just wanted to see the prisoners that were here when I was here. Um, the foreigners. Talk to the foreigners. Let them know that, you know, not to give up hope. That, um, you know, your life still can turn around and be better. I love to know that people haven't forgotten about him, you know? It's important. My name's Krista. I was here um, in 1996 for three years with my friend Jennifer. And I just, I wanted to come back for a really long time to visit the prison. I think for me, emo on an emotional level, to come back, to see people. If it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, right? So. You dream about the future and what you're gonna do. It is possible. It is. It all is possible. I think my experience in Peru was a wake-up call. With the drugs, with money, prioritizing things in life, um, realizing what's important. That was the craziest wake-up call that you could possibly have. Besides, like, being in a coma for 10 years or something, God forbid, but I'm like, that. this is up there. This is where I, I live, 3B. I'm trying to remember what room Jennifer and I had. Hola. Hey, Kate. Kate doesn't seem okay. Oh, Kate. Dang, she's still in there? She's been here for over 10 years, and, and she remembers me and Jennifer. <laughs> It's not about what you have, it's about who you have, you know? I don't think I would be here today if Jennifer wasn't there. That's what I said. To go through it together, to have one another to lean on, shoulder to cry on. Taking a shower. Taking a hot shower. Waving when I want to. Oh, we did not have a mirror. We did not have... I'll always be there for her and she'll always be there for me. That's all there is to it. There's not... A day that goes by that I don't think about her or wonder what she's doing. Whatever makes her happy. We went through a lot together. Yeah, I did, 100%. Y'all thugged it out three years in a Peruvian jail. That's tough. And Banged Up Abroad is back next week at the earlier time of nine. Is it? Next, though, Bruce Lee stars in our five movie, right. Fist of Fury. All right. Awesome. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn your post on down.